Hello everybody, I'll be playing Eldritch Idol, an idol raising sim where after getting fired for your management position in the idol industry by your childhood friend, you must now help Kufli become a top performing idol or get killed along with the rest of humanity, and perhaps teach her more about the human world in the process. Keep in mind this is footage from the last time I played this, of all of the audio re-recorded because it was getting unbearable for me to edit. Hey producer, won't you let me use the search function on your PC again? I want to look up some photos of drowned corpses now. I think that'll help reduce my stress level by at least, hmm, maybe 20 whole points? I don't know what you mean by points. And I wish you didn't let waterlogged corpses so much. But you can do more things on the internet than look up images, you know? You can? That's right, you can also use the internet to chat to people or watch videos. And you can also use it to play video games. Video games? Yeah, I play a few myself. I've been playing this one MMORPG that's really good. MMO? An MMO is, uh... Ah oh, jeez, how to explain it? If Kuka doesn't know what a video game is, there's no way she'll know what an MMORPG is. There probably isn't any point in explaining it to her. It'd be easier to show her instead. But MMORPGs can be pretty addictive. I don't want it getting in the way of her career. What should I do? Hmm... There are definitely some solid choices here. I'm trying to decide between these two. Eh, let's go with... Let's go with a... Uh, Rhythm Game. Love Live. You know what? Let's forget about the MMORPG. We should play a Rhythm Game instead. That'll be more relevant to you as an idol. And it might help you improve your dancing. I mean, it's a long shot, but they'll be more productive than messing around in the character creation screen for three hours. People say they only play an MMORPG for an hour, but that's not possible. There are way too many customization options. Hmm, let's go with horror game. Oh, do you get to play as wicked monsters in these so-called horror games and reduce puny mortals into bloody chunks? Um, there's carry-on for that. Uh, well, uh... Games are all about challenge, so it's usually the opposite. The opposite? Yeah, there's a lot of spooky monsters in a horror game, but you don't usually get to control them. Instead, you have to run away from them. What? This isn't at all what I signed up for. If I'm going to play a horror game, it had better let me be an eldritch abomination. Otherwise, what's the point? I don't want to pretend to be some pathetic human. I want I'm already acting like a human. I want some wish fulfillment here. So she dreams about pulverizing humans as some sort of monster? Oh, well, who am I the judge? We all have our own tastes. Besides, maybe it would be hypocritical of me the judge. I do like kaijus a lot. Now that you mention it, there might be a few games where you get to torment humans. There are? People playground. Well, there's one game where you get to roll them up into a ball. Does that sound like fun? That sounds like Katamari. But okay. That's, um... That's... That's an interesting... I think I preferred it if there were a lot of guts and gore. But that doesn't sound too bad either. Alright, you convinced me. I think I'd like to give this game a go after all. Who knows? Maybe it'll even help reduce my stress a little. Gotcha. This is a terrible decision. No, I'm not going that. Gotcha games are evil. The last time I got seriously invested in one of those money drains, I wound up flat broke. Just go free to play, idiot. I don't want to scrape by living on instant noodles for the rest of the month. Huh, producer, are you alright? Wah! Was I spacing out? Did it look like I wasn't alright? Kind of. Your face suddenly turned very pale and you start shaking. Yeah, that sounds like an accurate reaction to how that's gotcha gaming. Just go free to play. Sorry, I was just relieving something traumatic. Um, maybe you shouldn't play video games after all. You know what? What? You can look up your photos of drowning victims or whatever you really want. I'd be a better use of your time than playing Tenchi Impact at least. And it'll be a hell of a lot cheaper. Now if the FBI is on your case. Hmm. Dating sim. What's a dating sim? It's what the label says. Dating sims are games where you get to interact with other characters, usually kill girls, and fall in love with them. You have to raise your stats, and if you can appeal to the girl's taste, they'll fall in love with you. Playing a game like this might be a good way to work on your charm. Not really. I see. 
While talking to real people would probably be a better way of improving my social skills, I might be able to learn some lessons from one of them so-called dating sims. It wouldn't hurt to try it. Though it does make me wonder about you, producer. Well, what does it make you wonder exactly? Do you play a lot of these games? Well, uh, from time to time. Heh, <laughs> I knew it! Huh? What, what does she know exactly? And why is her expression so pitying? She isn't judging me, is she? She is. It's a bit sad if you feel compelled to turn to fictional girls to soothe your weary heart. But there, there. I won't tell us so how desperate you are for human company, nor how pitiful you are. P -p pitiful Indeed, interacting with girls who aren't real is a bit sad. Fortunately for you, however, I think that all humans are pitiful, regardless of their interests. You're all so far beneath me, I would never dream of discriminating. I hold you all in an equal amount of contempt, which means I also love you all equally. My heart is as fast as the ocean. Now that you pledge yourself to be my producer, I would never turn my back on you. So, don't worry. I'll always be by your side. Let's make a terrible, terrible decision. The worst, even. I'm sure this will be fine. It can't hurt, right? I'll just show her the game, help her set up a character, and do a few quests with her. It'll only take an hour or two tops. It'll be a fun bonding exercise. There's no way ending consequential a decision could lead to a bad ending. Right? It's going to lead to a bad ending. Two hours later. Alright, your character is just about set up now. Do you need more help with it, Cuckoo? Oh no, I think I'm good now. Thank you very much for showing me the ropes, producer. Now, I think I'll play around for just a little bit longer. Sure thing, I hope you have a good time. Maybe I'll join in myself. Once you've leveled up a bit, we might be able to do some raids together. Oh, raids! That conjures up wonderful images in my mind's eye of bloodshed and screams of suffering. Uh, I don't know, man. That sounds like fun! I think you might have the wrong idea, just a little. But I'm glad you're excited. Let's have some fun. Terrible, terrible things. 24 hours later. Hey, Cuckoo, are you still playing that? Oh yes, considering it was created by mere humans, this piece of entertainment is surprisingly diverting. I'm having a lot of fun. There's any number of quests to complete and monsters to slay. Though I wish people would stop following me around asking for images of my character's feet. I can't say I understand the appeal. Uh, yeah, people can be kind of weird like that in this game. You should probably just block them. Hmm, as if I would do something so craven. Blocking and moving on is a coward's way out. I would much rather guide these fools into an area full of monsters than leave them to die. That is what they deserve for mocking me. Cool. <laughs> well, I guess you could do that too, even if it's bad adequate. Well, so is asking people for photographs of their feet. I might want a cult of devoted worshippers, but I don't want these people to revere me just because they want to look at my toes. People like that should all be torn apart by behemoths. Torn apart, huh? That's a pretty strict policy. But it looks like Cuckoo's having fun. Maybe I should let her get on with it. To be honest, you kind of get you're, you kind of get people uh, like that in every game. Three months later. Oh no. Ah, I did it! I finally defeated the Crimson Dragon on Savage difficulty, and I was rewarded with a very nice set of armor for my efforts. Now everybody on the server will know that I'm a force to be reckoned with. The foolish peons who thronged this virtual world will no longer ask me for low-res images of my virtual feet. Oh, they're still gonna do that. I hope you know that. I've hit the level cap, I've accrued all sorts of loot, and the best of the strongest boss in the whole game. Seriously, people are still gonna ask you for your feet pics. <laughs> Just give up. Now praise my name, peasants! I finally conquered this ridiculous realm. And all shall quiver in fear before me. 
Well, way to go, Cuckoo. You're the best. I can't believe you got so strong so quickly. You're amazing. It's called no living. Well, naturally, I am a great old one after all. When I put my mind to it, there's nothing I can't do. Wow, Cuckoo's so cool. I never thought she'd become the strongest player on the server in only three months. That goes to show you where determination can get you. With a bit of luck, several weeks of sleepless nights, and a crap load of instant noodles, of course. Gaming with her has been a real blast. I can't help but feel like there was something else Cuckoo wanted to do, though. Hmm. But I can't remember it. Well, if you don't remember it, it doesn't matter. Oh well, I'm sure it wasn't that important after all. Now, let's put together another party and run Crimson Dragon on Savage Difficulty once again! There's no point in having rare armor like this if I can't show it off. I need everybody to know how awe-inspiring I am. My legacy will extend all across the land, the very cosmos themselves. Then, and only then, will I have achieved true domination. <laughs> Ending 15, Confessions of an MMO Junkie. My producer is so mean. I can't believe she won't let me look at any photographs of drowned corpses. But I guess I'll make do. Of course I won't let you look at any corpses, that's messed up. Stop talking about that. Er, is it just me or are people in line all really annoying? Olivia, it's not just you. There's a lot of irritating people out there. But it doesn't look like Cuckoo's enjoying herself. Maybe she should log off for tonight. Romance is always popular. Romance, hmm? I'm not particularly interested in the personal affairs of humans. I couldn't care less whether your kind continue to procreate. Though it would be bad, I suppose, if your kind died off completely, then I wouldn't have any foolish humans to pay me tribute. Perhaps I should trouble myself further about your romantic entanglements. It might prove to be instructive. Um, well, I didn't suggest it because I wanted to instruct you, I just thought you'd like it. Rad stories are pretty popular with young girls after all. The girls back in my school all like that stuff up. They love shy glances and barely brushing hands, especially when it took place under cherry blossom trees. Apart from Karen. I doubt that the presence of cherry blossoms would make me care more about your kind and your romantic entanglements than I do. But I can always take a look. If this is what ordinary girls like, then I should start taking notes. Wow, she's taking this more seriously than I thought she would. And where did those glasses come from? What about a sports series? Sports? Yeah, there's a lot of really good sports manga out there, and it's all really hot-blooded. There are series about soccer, tennis, volleyball, basketball, baseball, also ice skating. Heck, even go! I've read a lot of sports manga, so I have a lot I can share with you. If you want to read about sweaty boys and the power of friendship, that is. Yikes. Personally, I think the power of friendship is very puerile. It certainly cannot compare to the power possessed by the great old ones. But Sweaty Boys might be so very bad. Huh? Really? Okay. That might prove to be somewhat diverting. From what? Hehe. <laughs> it really isn't. BL? That's right. It stands for Boys Love and it's a pretty popular genre among young women. I figured you might be into it since you're an eternally 18-year-old high school girl. Though that might be a bit of a generalization, it's fine if you don't care for it, but you might as well check it out. You never know, it might awaken something in you. Oh god. Ooh, now that does sound interesting. I know very little about boys' love, but naturally I am interested in anything that any high school girl would like. I am a perfectly normal high school student after all. There is nothing strange about me whatsoever, absolutely nothing at all. And if becoming a purveyor of the finest of BL works will prove that, then I shall do it. I am going to blend into society seamlessly. Now, have you over all the BL in your possession, producer? This isn't a request. I'm going to study like my life depends on it. Yes, ma'am. I'm happy to help, but where did those glasses come from? 
Ah, it's so good. It's so good at all. Hmm, what's wrong? All this manga I've been reading. I've been tearing my way through all sorts of BL series, but still can't get enough. I had no idea that delicately depicted romance stories between two boys could make my maidenly heart flutter so much. But it has awoken something within me. Shy since the boys who get flustered easily are nice. But so are aggressive boys who know what they want. I like handsome princely types, but delinquents who act rough around the edges have a charm of their own. Boys who look like girls are adorable and older men are fine by me too. Tops who act commanding and assertive make me tremble, but it's also nice when a meek, mild-mannered boy takes charge. Childhood friends too shy to confess is a tried and true formula that's sure to make any girl go doki doki. I don't know what people like about BL and I don't like romance in general, so rest assured that I'm suffering as much as you are as I read this. But it's also fun when creators get really inventive with their pairings. Enemies to lovers is a lot of fun since it gives like the story a bit of a kick, and down-to-earth romances between co-workers feels nice and realistic. I've read stories about angels and demons, serial killers and the detectives who are hunting them, and even lawyers who are working together in the same courtroom. It's all so good. It's too good. It's so incredible. I can't get enough of it. I need more pretty boys, handsome boys, wild boys, older men are good if they know how to take charge, but they might be even better if they don't. I read stories set in schools and offices in the further reaches of the galaxy. I read so many stories, my mind is full of nothing but BL. Reading simply isn't enough anymore. It can't satisfy me. If I'm going to indulge in my passions, I believe in doing it wholeheartedly. So I think I should give up on being an idol and start writing BL doujinshi of my own from now on. I think I had a friend who wanted to write BL doujinshi. I don't know what happened to her. That's the true way to happiness. And if I keep it up, I'm sure I'll be able to conquer the world. Idols are inferior, but BL is eternal. I'll amass an army of rotten girls. And I'll rule over them from on high as their queen. Wow, um, I'm not sure about this sudden change in career trajectory, but she sounds really excited. A little too excited. I would have preferred to see her become a professional idol, but I don't want to spoil things. If this is really what she wants, I can go along with it. As a producer, I'm not gonna judge her. Alright, Cuckoo, if that's what you want, then I'll help you. I would've liked to see you work even harder as an idol. But I love manga a lot too. Like idols, manga also makes people happy. So I think you should do it. Follow your heart. After all, you only live once. Ha, ah, yes, you're right. You might look as gormless as a guppy, but you're wise beyond your years. I knew you'd understand, producer. You're the best. But of course, I knew that already. You're the one who introduced me to BL after all. And my heart has never felt lighter. What have we unleashed upon this world? Now, it's time to make a lot of cute boys very, very sticky. Oh no! <laughs> We've unleashed a monster. Later that year. Wow, I can't believe it. Tentacus has finally released a new doujin. Oh my gosh, I simply can't wait to get my hands on it. Tentacus's last work was so good. I simply tore through it. I know, right? There's so many good BL doujin circles, but none of them really get it like Tentacus. The way she draws boys is so dreamy. I don't have the long eyelashes Tentacus boys have. And the long, delicate fingers. There's something so fragile about their art. It's very sensitive. The compositions are great. The stories are full of emotion. And of course, the adult scenes are very spicy. Yeah! Talking about adult scenes in a quiet place like this? I'll die. I'm already dying. I need to see what happens to Tentacute's boys next. Will they finally reconcile their differences? I hope it wasn't just a one-night stand. Of course it wasn't. Tentacute would never betray her fans like that. Yo's too cute to be wasted on a one-night stand. Ah, Ravi's such a bad boy, though. Can they really be happy together? No. Then there's also the societal aspects you have to consider. I mean, the relationship is pretty unusual. It's controversial. But doesn't that make it even more exciting? Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens next. Kira. Wow, um, it looks like you amassed a pretty passionate fanbase. Maybe a little too passionate. Maybe... Even concerning. We've only just finished setting up, but there's already a massive queue. 
It looks like everyone wants a piece of your boys. God, why'd you gotta phrase it like that? Well, naturally. After my first foray into the world of BL Dojinshi was such a massive success, it's to be expected that my second installment with the Milo Cousin Cappy Dispute would generate such a huge buzz. Everything is going just according to Keikaku. Translator note, Keikaku means one. Now that I managed to dig my hooks in the hearts of these rotten girls, they'd be quite at my mercy. I'll keep writing, drawing, and selling stories about cute boys falling in love, falling out of love, and having passionate makeup sex. And soon, the world will be mine! Cool. <laughs> now you sound like a villain from a superhero show. A villain? Me! Never! How can I be a villain? I'm not providing these people with what they want. It certainly won't be my fault if the power of my stories enslaves these people. Though I certainly wouldn't complain. Now, it looks like everything's ready. Tentacute's booth in this year's winter comic kit is officially open for business. And I'm very, very happy to meet all of you! My lovely, supportive, adoring fans! Ending 8. Girls love, boys love. Another morning. This time, I think we should try sleeping in a lot. See what happens there. Same thing. Uh, shake your shoulders. Cuckoo. Hey, cuckoo. A new day has dawned. It's time to get up. Is this enough to wake her? I should keep going. Cuckoo. Hey, cuckoo. <sighs> Producer, what are you doing? Waking you up. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and it's time to get your butt moving. You shouldn't talk about a woman's butt. It's not professional. And why are you being so pushy? Can't you see I'm trying to sleep? I can tell, yeah, but... Hmm... Aren't you the one who wants to be an idol? I am, but I also know my limitations. Getting rest is just as important as working hard. So that being said, I'm going back to bed. Don't disturb me again unless the world is coming to an end, otherwise you'll regret it. Okay. <sighs> wow, she wasn't kidding. She really has gone back to sleep. That's kind of impressive. This isn't how I want to start today, but if I don't let her sleep in once in a while, she'll get stressed. <sighs> Aw, it looks like my little idol to be is all tuckered out. She has been pushing herself pretty hard, so I'll leave her be for now. I don't want to disturb her. <laughs> oh, she's talking in her sleep. How cute. She really is out like a light, though. I wonder. Should I play a prank on her? Hmm. Draw something on her face. Well, of course I will. I've got to make the most of this moment. She doesn't let her guard down very often. This'll be a fun chance to deepen the relationship. <laughs> now, where did I put my marker pens? <sighs> that was a good dress. Thank you, producer, for letting me lay in. Even famous idols like myself need a bit of beauty sleep. That's... <laughs> Alright, don't... <laughs> mention it. Hmm? Why are you looking at me like that? Is there something on my face? Oh, you could say that. I didn't drool in my sleep, did I? Oh yeah, you do do that sometimes. Er, how embarrassing. I guess I'll have to take a look in the mirror. Wait, what the? What's all the stuff on my face? Hey, producer! What did you do to me while I was sleeping, you dummy? Huh, looks like she's still asleep. That's quite like Cuckoo, I guess. She has always been bad at waking up in the morning. I feel like I've been letting her sleep in a lot, though. I'm not sure if it's good for her. It might make it hard for her to make much progress in her career. If she really wants to be an idol, she needs much more motivation than this. I guess I need to try and wake her up. Cuckoo. Hey, Cuckoo. It's morning. The sun is shining and a brand new day started. You have to get up. Mm -hmm. Arr, just give me five more minutes. I can't give you five more minutes. You've been slacking off too much lately. Let's get you up. Come on. I can make us breakfast. I bought some natto from the convenience store. And then we can head down to the beach. We could do some radio calisthenics if going for a jog is too much and then... 
Now how old? It's too much of a pain. Hey, hey, cuckoo, you. Huh? She, she's grabbing me with her hair. Or at least I think it's hair. It sure is squirming around a lot for hair, though. It feels so squishy. It's kinda squish, squish. Kinda squish, squish. Oh, it's actually not that bad. I could get used to this. Stop bothering me, producer. You're being, being too loud. I'm tired. I just want to rest. I'm the dreaming god. So stop bugging me already and let me snooze. <sighs> cuckoo? Hey, cuckoo? <sighs> it's no good. She's out like a light. There's no getting through to her. Oh well. She's gripping me so tightly over here, I can't get free either. Save. Oh, nope, it's an ending. There's no point struggling, so... Maybe I should get some shut-eye too. I have been pushing myself pretty hard after all. I'll worry about all this idle stuff later. For now, I just want to sleep. Ending 12, She Who Lies Dreaming. Phew, I think I did a pretty good job today. My stamina has definitely improved. But jogging in the south is kind of hard. It looks it. I'm surprised you can keep that hat balanced on your head. That's what you're wondering about? Well, yeah. It's such a tiny hat and you jog so quickly. How come it doesn't fall off? I just... Wait, don't tell me. You don't use dark magic, do you? If by dark magic you mean hairpins, then yes, I guess I do. Oh, right. I should have known. <laughs> yes, you really should have. I might be incredibly strong, but I'm not going to waste my efforts using arcane arts to keep my hat on my head. That would be really inefficient, silly producer. I guess so. I'm still not sure what she means by being strong. But she does have a lot of stamina. Her running times have improved a lot, but... Well, if it's hard to run in those clothes, why don't I buy you something more appropriate? You can't go wrong with spats. Oh, are you offering to pay me tribute, producer? I don't know, if I term it like that, I was thinking more of buying you a gift. <laughs> well, it's alright, I appreciate the offer, but I'm not interested in buying any running gear. And uh, why is that? Because it wouldn't be as cute as my usual outfit, obviously. I'm an idol, so I've got to look adorable at all times, even when I'm working out. It's the law! I think you look adorable at anything. You really think so? That's very sweet. <laughs> but no, ahem. <laughs> Such compliments are to be expected. I am training to be an idol. Looking adorable is my reason for living. That, and exerting my control over the masses, so they will one day recognize me as their superior ruler. Coo coo coo! Kira. There's another reason, though, that I'm not asked to buy any sports clothes. That being. You can't afford it, can you? I've seen the state of your apartment, it's dire. Oof. Well, I guess she's not wrong there. She's being thoughtful in her own way, I guess, but that still stings. What do you think of tonight's dinner, Cuckoo? I tried cooking something for once, so this should taste a little better than our usual convenience store fare. I don't have much experience in the kitchen. Karen always used to make my lunches back when we were in high school. But I gave it some serious effort. I was too anxious to deep fry the chicken because I didn't want the oil to splatter on me, but I did put the rice into the cooker myself. The bare minimum. It's a little mushy because I used too much water, but it's still edible. Oh, and I made the miso soup too. Sure, I just added hot water to some stock, but it's better than nothing. We would not be able to be a wife. Yeah, nope. Do you like it? I hope it isn't too salty. Hmm, well... Cuckoo's been all the quiet all the time. She's been staring at my food pretty intently, too. It's like she's trying to bore a hole straight through it. She doesn't think my food is disgusting, does she? If she does, I'll cry. I'll really seriously cry. It still looks pretty amateur. Ow, I expected as much, but that still hurts. But I'm glad that you tried, at least. I can tell that you're working very hard, producer. So I'm going to work hard at being an idol. Cuckoo. 
The savage she approves of my efforts. Thank goodness. All those burns weren't for nothing after all. I'm so happy. That being said... Gulp. What is it now? I still think you can take some pointers from Food Fighters. The show's going to air soon, so let's watch it together. If you watch enough cookery anime, I'm sure I'll become a half-decent chef someday. You just need to keep at it. I believe in you. Well, I did work in the idol industry. Oh yes, you did, didn't you? You act so gormless, I sometimes forget. How could you forget that? I'm literally your producer. Hehe, <laughs> I suppose that is true. You'll have to forgive me for being a ditz producer. Having a boat rammed into your cranium can do that to a girl. It's been almost a century, but I still get headaches sometime. In any case, there might be some difficulties involved, but it's important that I have an outfit. Okay, yeah, we'll just skip this. Karen's mother was a professional seamstress. Was she now? Yeah, I used to hang around Karen's house a lot as a kid, and her mother always looked frazzled. She was pretty popular, so she got a lot of orders. She made all sorts of fancy outfits. Wedding dresses, specially tailored suits. Heck, I think she even did costume designs for a few movies. That's how Karen got her foot in the door of the entertainment industry, actually. Her mother had some connections. So that woman's career was founded on nepotism, was it? I would say I'm disappointed. But I expected nothing less of the foolish woman who failed to recognize your talent. Why you talk about her so much is a mystery after everything she did to you. But never mind. Ah, now that hit the spot. The drinks they serve in this place are so good. Being able to sing as much as I want is real nice. But the drinks, man, the drinks make it all way better. There's so much different stuff that you can order. There's soda and juice and all sorts of tea, milk and ice and fruit. But I think today's drink beats them all. This grape juice is it, super, super, super good. Can I order it? another glass of this stuff, producer? It's too yummy. Oh no, she's drunk. We put out the karaoke parlor for about an hour, but Cuckoo's been acting strange ever since she started ordering those drinks. Her face is all red and she keeps tripping over her words. I wonder. Hey, Cuckoo, there isn't anything strange about that grape juice you ordered, is there? Mm, I don't think so. There's nothing strange about it. Heck, other than how good it's making me feel. My head mm, is all light. It feels like a cotton wool. Everything's all soft and fluffy, but I can still keep on drinking. Keep it coming, producer. Don't be stingy. I don't want to be stingy, but you're not acting like your usual self. I think you must have ordered something alcoholic by mistake. Flash alcohol. It's, um, how do I put this? I guess it's a drink that makes you feel good. If it makes you feel good, then what's the problem? I can drink even more. But it's only for adults. So? So you're still a teenager, you shouldn't be knocking back booze. Oh, producer, you worry too much. It's not like I'm hey, not an adult. I thought you were only 18. I'm eternally 18 in this body. But I've actually hey, been alive for millennia. I'm not called a great old one for nothing, you know. I've been sleeping there nearly longer than... I don't know. It's like you have even existed. I am eternal. I am an invincible. And I want to drink even more of this yummy delicious juice. I'm a great old one, you know? You can't tell me what to do. I just want to have some fun. I think she's having plenty of fun already. I don't want to be a party pooper. Should I let it slide? She's worked hard, so she should be allowed to relax. Yay! Thank you, producer, for seeing things my way. <laughs> You're not that bad after all. Not that I really need your permission to keep drinking or anything. <laughs> oh no. Now, I want to drink even more delicious juice. The night's still young and I can keep on going. Let's do this thing. 
Oh no! What have we done? Later that night. Ah, uh, that mm, really does hit the spot. This is some damn good juice. <laughs> I feel just like a soap bubble. It's like all my worries are melting away. I'm so floaty. This body isn't enough to contain me anymore. I can't hold myself back. I'm sorry, producer. I'm gonna burst. Huh? Cuckoo? What, what's wrong? Your, your skin is turning green and your body... It, it's doubling? Tripling? No, quadrupling its size! I, if you keep expanding, you're going to destroy the karaoke booth! You're going to destroy the whole building! Oh, you're going to destroy me! Yep, we're dead. You'll crush me! Hey, Cuckoo. You're so dead. Ah, this feels so much better! I've been in that human form for much too long. It's constraining. Letting go of my ambitions is incredible. Finally, I can be my real self again. This is who I really am. I am Kufalu, the High Priest of the Great Old Ones. And now it's finally time for me to conquer this world for good. Coo 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 coo. Ho 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 ho. Heck. Ending 10, the end of the world as we know it. Now we know, don't... Don't let Adobe girls get drunk. Now for the other choice. Boo, you're so freaking boring, producer. Stop being such a meanie. I'm not being mean, I'm just trying to look out for you. Great old one or not, it's obvious you're not used to drinking. Now let me be a responsible adult for once in my life. You're so freaking boring. I can't stand it. You're the worst. You're even nastier than the deep ones. You're a. I'm a. You're a. Uh, uh, it looked like she had a little too much after all. She's passed out. <laughs> well, letting her rest her head against my shoulder isn't all that bad. I don't know when she'll wake up, but I guess this is fine. Being used as a lap below every once in a while is also part of a producer's duties. <laughs> Phew, and that's a wrap. I think I did pretty well today, if I do say so myself. What do you think, producer? Did I dazzle you with my mesmeric moves? What? Oh, um... Yes, I'm sure you did a great job, Cuckoo! Mm, that doesn't sound very convincing. In fact, it was rather half-hearted. I saw you were supposed to be my biggest cheerleader. What happened to that? Didn't you mean it when you said you'd always support me? Oh, oh no. I do want to be your cheerleader, Cuckoo. It's, of course I do. It's just... It's just what? I don't have any proof, but I'm sure someone was watching us. Since Cuckoo's dancing on the beach, it's natural that people would stop by to take a look, but this felt deliberate. It was as though someone was lurking in the shadows, observing her every move. But maybe I'm being paranoid. I guess I've not been getting enough sleep. Producer, what's the matter? I'm waiting for an explanation, and that better be good! Crap, now Cuckoo's getting mad. I don't want to worry her, so maybe I should make something up. But I'm not very good at lying either. She'll see through me in a second. What should I say? Uh, I think you might have a stalker. A stalker, huh? Heh, <laughs> well, I'm not particularly surprised. Huh, isn't she upset about that? I did come out and tell her that without any build-up. I feel like most girls would be upset if they heard that. Yes, they would. Her tentacles are just gonna wrap around them and embrace them, and uh, they're, they're just gonna die. Goodbye, everybody. You're, you're dead. She doesn't care. But I guess Cuckoo isn't like most girls. For one thing, her hair moves. I'm so charming after all. It would be weird if I didn't have a stalker or two at this point. The way I see it, that means I've matured as an idol. Now that's an unexpectedly positive reading of the situation. Aren't you worried? Of course not! Why should I be? No puny human will ever be able to get the better of me. If they try to overpower me, I'll soon make them sorry. I'm capable of taking care of myself. 
Well, maybe you should be a little more careful, producer. What? Why me? If I do have a stalker, you'll be their prime target. You do hang out with me all the time, after all. But don't worry. If push comes to shove, I'm sure I can protect you too. Oops. I get the distinct feeling that you're trying to change the subject. Or I guess I'm not very subtle. But given I am very cute, I suppose I'll let it slide for now. Good job, producer. You got lucky this time. But next time you fail to pay attention to me, there will be consequences. I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Hmm. Only yesterday you asked me if I thought about filming a music video where I dressed in a dinosaur costume and crush a teeny tiny diorama of Tokyo. All your thoughts are weird. And you talk to cockroaches. You're a strange person in general. Hey, I might be strange, but there's nothing weird about loving kaijus. They're cool. Whatever you say, producer. Now, what's been bothering you? Well, that is... <sighs> oh, that's funny. I got all caught up in thinking about kaijus and now I can't remember. You really are useless. Why do you even keep you around? Because of my sharp wit and my sound business decisions? And people call me the great dreamer. Sometimes I really do wonder about you. Alright, that's a wrap. I think I did pretty well today, if I do say so myself. I might even go so far as to say that I went swimmingly. <laughs> wow, Cuckoo's come on leaps and bounds since she first started training to be an idol. Oops, I skipped that. Her dancing could still use some work, but her raw appeal is off the charts. I'm sure she'll get loads of fans before long. Um, fidget, fidget. Speaking of which, this boy has been watching Kuku for a while. Maybe he's been entranced by her too. Hello there, are you alright? Oh, um, uh, yes, I am fine. Um, I was just wondering. Excuse me, miss? Are you talking to me? Yeah, that's that's right. I was just wondering, um, uh, would you give me your autograph? Oh, has he recognized Cuckoo? This is a pretty big development. It looks like she's gotten herself her first fan. <laughs> well, of course, it was only a matter of time before you foolish humans flocked to me, begging for my attention. I am incredibly cute after all, not to mention talented, smart, and hardworking. I would commend you for recognizing my talents, boy. Aw, Cuckoo's patting him on the head, how sweet. Maybe she has a soft spot for children. But my greatness is such that everybody ought to realize it. I'm surprised it's taking this long for me to achieve any recognition. Me, me too, I've been a huge fan for a long, long time, miss. You have? He has. She hasn't been trying to be an idol for that long, though. Yes, I've followed your MyTube account for almost a year. Her dad's covers are the best. You're so lively and energetic. And you're really pretty too. I know that I'm pretty. But what's this about a MyTube account? I'm talking about Graceful Gatanazoa, of course. You upload dad's covers of popular songs every Friday. I never miss them. They always cheer me up. Even if the other boys at school tease me for liking girly dance videos. <laughs> You don't get your appeal. But I do. I know that you work really hard, Miss Gatanasoa. You're the best. Gatanasoa? Wait. Don't tell me she's trying to become an idol too. Huh? Um. Are you not graceful, Gatanasoa? No, I'm Kufalu, but you can call me Cuckoo. I'm aiming to be a top idol, not some two-bit dancer. I'm an all-rounder. How could you confuse me with Gatanazoa? She's so awkward and ungainly. And she has about a billion eyes. What's so appealing about that? Um, uh, Miss, Miss Gatanazoa doesn't have a billion eyes, she has a normal amount. Why is her name so hard to pronounce? Her hair does wriggle around a lot though. I, I thought you were her because your hairstyles are similar. Um, but now that I think about Miss Gatanasoa is a bit um... Is he staring at Cuckoo's chest? 
Well, well, she's a bit bigger than you, um... Uh, I'm so sorry, I, I have to go, my mom will be wondering where I am. Um, good, good, good luck with your career, Cuckoo, uh, I'll be cheering for you. What? Hey, get back here. Don't you want my autograph? I guess not, he's already gone. Hmm, that child had no idea how fortunate he was to meet me. My autograph will be worth millions, no, billions one day, and I was prepared to give it to him for free. How ungrateful. This is why I can't stand humans. I mean, who prefers Katanasoa over Kufalu? I am the face of the old ones. I've always been more popular than her. And my name is infinitely easier for humans to pronounce too. Yes, it is. Hm. This blows. Hey, producer. Do you know what? What? I don't think things are working out between us. I'm sorry, producer, but... Uh, what? I think it's time for you and I to go our separate ways. Every bird has to fly the nest eventually. And kill... Ah. And there's a big, big sky I'd like to explore on my own. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. And please, don't despise me too much. You should have known from the very beginning just how serious I am about becoming an idol. I'm prepared to do absolutely anything, and I'll get rid of all the obstacles in my way, including you. And, uh, uh, I'm dying. My chest really, really hurts. What happened? This is all happening so quickly. Light vision is going black. Cuckoo, she... She didn't. Did she... R really do this? She... Really is a monster. Ending 17, the tide is high. Ah, that's it, I've had enough of this! Hey, Cuckoo, what's wrong? What's wrong, you ask? What's wrong? I answer to that ought to be obvious. You're the one that's wrong, producer, you and the whole idol industry to boot. It's rotten. It stinks just like fish guts left out in the sun. I know that being an idol would be hard, but I didn't realize it would be quite this stressful. You've been pushing me to work from morning to night without any breaks. I'm going to go crazy here. I can't keep doing this. I told you to take care of me, producer. But you betrayed me. You pushed me much too hard. And now, I'm going to flood this miserable world. Now I'll never need to get up for work again. Huh? She, she isn't really going to end the world, is she? Oh, yes, yeah, she is. That shouldn't be possible. She's just some skinny high school girl. That's what she looks like, but the ground. It's shaking. And it's starting to rain pretty hard, too. What's going on? Maybe I really did push Cuckoo too hard. If I had the chance to do this over, I'd go a little easier on her. Nobody wants to work themselves to death. Ah, uh, I'm dead. Ending 13. This is the story of a girl. Phew, I finally passed the last of those flyers out. But that was rather strenuous. Walking around in the sweater is so difficult. Er, I know what you mean. Having those flyers out took longer than expected. People weren't very interested, probably because it's so hot. I saw relaxing in this park might make us feel better, but it's warm here too. I feel like I'm melting. It's much too hot today. It's miserable. I think I need to take a few minutes to cool down. <sighs> Cuckoo's sighing pretty heavily. And her face looks kind of flush. Maybe she's been pushing herself too hard. She has been putting a lot of effort in, so I should get her a reward. Hey, Cuckoo, just stay here, alright? I'm going to go and buy you something. Oh, huh? What could this possibly be? You'll see soon enough. I won't be a moment. I was curious about where you were going, producer, but I did not expect that you would return bearing gifts. Is this for me? Of course it is. I can't think of anybody who deserves it more. Here. This popsicle is nice and cool, so it should help soothe you. And it's sweet, too. Who doesn't like popsicles? I am unsure whether I like them or not. I have not had a chance to try such an intriguing food stuff. But it does not look like food should. It's very blue. It's supposed to be that color. It's all part of the experience. Hmm... This sort of blue does not look natural. 
But who am I to judge? I have tentacles for hair after all. Let me take a bite of this popsicle. I want to see if it's up to my standards. Munch munch. So, how is it? Do you like it? Hmm. The flavor is very curious. It's hard to put into words, but... It's surprisingly tasty. Phew, I'm glad you liked it. Cuckoo has strange tastes. So I was worrying. It is tasty, isn't it? Popsicles always taste the best on hot days like this, after you've been moving your body around a bit. It's the perfect treat. It really is. With only a single mouthful, I already feel invigorated. Thank you, producer. You're not so bad after all. Munch munch. So, what do you think of today's dinner? I tried to do something fancier than usual today. There was some cheap beef at the supermarket, so I bought that, then... Huh, I'm sorry, producer, but I need to cut you off. The new seasonal anime is airing today, and there's a series with Moriyama Daisuke as the leading role. I can't not tune in to see what he's been doing. His role as Kirisaki Shin and possessive boyfriends was so good, it sent chills down my spine. Is this a reference to something? Was he a yandere? I hope he'll be another murderous pretty boy. Those are my favorites after all. Moriyama Daisuke. That name sounds familiar. I think I've seen some anime he's in. It stands to reason since he is pretty well known. I didn't know Kuku had seen enough anime to have favorite voice actors though. Although, speaking of, is Possessive Boyfriends even an anime series? Kara used to like that back in high school, but I thought it was a drama CD. Kuku must have been looking some stuff up on her own. I had no idea she'd become such an idol otaku. Ah, Moriyama Daisuke, my beloved! Every single word you see in that deep, rich baritone of yours echoes throughout my very soul. I would give my life up for your sake if I could. I might be the dreamer of the deep, but you are even dreamer than I am. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I never really remember voice actors' names. So, how is Moriyama Daisuke? Did he steal the show? But of course, Moriyama Daisuke steals the show in everything he's in. There's a reason why Shin is the best possessive boyfriend out there. But he didn't get nearly enough lines in that episode. What were the directors thinking? It's a travesty having a man that talented and not utilizing him. If I were Moriyama Daisuke, I'd be filing a complaint. Being a Karen, I see. He deserves much, much better. <laughs> you sure sound passionate. Well, of course I am. It's only natural to be passionate about talented actors. He's the cream of the crop when it comes to voice actors. He's so good, in fact. He's made me realize just how valuable voice acting as an industry is. I always thought that idol stood at the pinnacle of the entertainment industry. But with his voice alone, Moriyama Daisuke is able to accomplish much more than I ever could. I knew he's no more than a lowly human. He's so talented, he's somewhat frustrating, but that gives me an idea. What? What if I became a voice actress myself? I don't have any formal training, but my singing abilities have come on in leaps and bounds. I take good care of my voice, and I know how to project it. I think I could do a good job as a voice actress. Unless you have any objections? I'd like you to pursue your dreams. Oh, producer, thank you so much. I know this is sudden, but I'm going to do my very best. I won't let you down, I swear! I'm going to become the best voice actress this world has ever seen. And then, maybe I'll even be able to stand in the same recording booth as Moriyama Daisuke. I'll get there eventually, just you wait for me. I'm not going to let some silly human outdo me. And I'm definitely not going to let you conquer my heart. I'll conquer your sanity first. <laughs> Sometime later. Oh, Hayumu, you really are a silly boy. You have no idea what's good for you. This could have all been avoided if only you'd listen to me. But it isn't too late for you. We could try this again. This is your dream after all. 
We can repeat this as many times as you want. As many times as it takes. You just need to learn to accept me. Why don't we give that a try? I really do want the best for you, you know? And I really do love you. I love you when you're working hard to pursue your passions. But I also love you when you've given up on everything and you just want to cry. I love you when you're lying in bed and you're too sick to stand up. And I love you when you're slumped on the ground in a puddle of your own blood. I love the hardworking, industrious Ayumu, but I also love the scared, shy, awkward, anxious, pathetic Ayumu. I love all of you. And I'm never going to let you go. I promise. And that's a wrap. Phew, that monologue took it out of me. It took it out of me, too. I've just been listening to her, but I'm starting to get chills. I didn't know Kuku was such a good actress. So, how was that, Mr. Director? Did I make a convincing enough Nagi? Oh, I'll say you did. You're more than convincing. I can't believe you've only been in the voice acting industry for, what was it? A little over a year, Mr. Director. Is that it? Goodness me, you're a natural. I think you'd make a perfect Nagi. I'd be honored to have you on board for this project, miss. Oh, I'm called Kufalu, but you could call me Cuckoo. I'm looking forward to working with you. And of course, I'm looking forward to working with the rest of my colleagues. This is the first big role I've landed, so I'm going to do my very best. I won't let you down, that's a promise. Ending 21, Girlfriend Simulator. I'd rather you become an idol. Eh, yeah, I thought you might say that. Truth be told, I think I'd be better off as an idol too. I'd like to work in the same industry as Moriyama Daisuke. Of course, I'm sure there's a lot that he could teach me. But I wouldn't want to be overbearing. Well, you see, a lot of idols, once they've reached a certain age, they've aged out of the idol industry, and so they usually go to the talk show circuit or something. So I'm sure if you really wanted to, after, you know, you retire from the idol industry, you can go become a voice actor. I'm Surely there's been cases of that. I feel like there should have been. It would make sense for there to be. What if he thinks I'm some obnoxious fangirl? That would be so embarrassing. I wouldn't be able to bear it. Yeah! Hmm, she said she wanted to be a voice actress because she thought it would suit her, but I'm starting to wonder. This wasn't the ploy that would meet Moriyama Daisuke, was it? Kuku usually acts mature for her age, so I sometimes forget. But I guess she really is a fair maiden at heart. Hey producer, I've noticed something about a lot of these animated series which just started to bother me. I've watched a few series and I've looked up some discourse on the internet. Oh no, that's the last thing anybody should do. And I've noticed that a lot of series like to use tentacles as the villains. Why is that, do you think? Huh? Tentacles? I, I can't say I was expecting that. Why are you looking up tentacle-related anime of all things? Well, why not? I want to see a bit of representation. I thought it would be fun to see how my kind are depicted by you humans. But my findings have been all very disappointing. And in many places, downright disturbing. Why are tentacles so often portrayed as being villainous? They always seem to get utilized to do fair maidens harm. It simply isn't fair. I feel like I'm being misrepresented. I'm not the perfect, no matter what anime might lead you to believe. And I have nothing against fair maidens in particular. I want to conquer the whole world, not 50% of it. Why aren't my people given any sort of respect? Well, tentacles are kinda creepy, or everyone will respect you when you become a pro. Heh <laughs> I guess that is true. I was so caught up in the here and the now, I failed to consider this crucial fact. But you are right. I'm training to become an idol so I can erase these harmful misconceptions that plague octopod creatures such as myself. I'll make everybody adore me, even if I do herald from the depths of the deepest, darkest ocean. 
and then everybody will see just how charming tentacles really are. Sure, do your best, Cuckoo. I'll be rooting for you. Though I don't get why she's so hung up on this. Her backstory is a little strange, but she's still an ordinary high school girl deep down, right? Right. Well, tentacles are kind of creepy. <clears throat> As expected of a simpleton. Of course you would regurgitate such drivel without a moment's thought as to how it might make me feel. What do you mean? Tentacles don't have anything to do with you. You're a cute high school girl. A cute high school girl who slumbered for centuries beneath the water's depths. I have more in common with those creepy tentacles that you might think. Not that I feel like discussing the matter right now. You're too close-minded. You want to understand. Hey, Cuckoo. This conversation is over. But... Over. Hmm. I was hoping you, of all people, would support me, producer. I guess I had too much faith in you. Yeah. Hmm? Oh. Are you saying good morning to me? Narlet Hotep? Yeah. Hehe. <laughs> How enthusiastic you are. It seems like somebody's eager to start today. Or perhaps you're simply hungry. Yeah. Yes, I did think that might be the case. Please, try to be patient. I'll prepare your food in a jiffy. You're a servant of the great old one, Kufalu, so you ought to be kept waiting. You're a VIP, a very important pussycat. Yeah. <laughs> did you like that? I thought it was quite a funny joke too. Perhaps my future isn't in being an idol after all, but in being a comedian. It's always after you retire, like I said. Hmm. Well, no matter. Let me start preparing your food. Good morning, producer! Rise and shine! It's early in the morning and we have a busy day ahead of us. Hmm, I guess we're right. Morning, Cuckoo. It's good to see you're already dressed. Though well, this is pretty unusual. You don't tend to wake up before I do. I don't, no. But I had a little bit of help this morning. Help? Yeah. Oh, I see. Did Nya wake Cuckoo up? That must be it. He's always following her around the house. He really must love her. It's good that Nya has been helping you establish more of a routine. But you always roll over and say, Just five more minutes when I try and wake you up. Why do you listen to a cat over your producer? Why wouldn't I listen to a cat over you? Narlahotep is far cuter than you are, and he is far, far fluffier. I can't exactly bury my face in your fur, producer. Well, you could always give it a try. <laughs> Let's not. But I guess you have a point. Oh well, I'm just glad you were able to make a new friend. Now, let's keep giving it our all, shall we? It's time to get to work. Hey, producer, where are we going? You said you wanted us to take a break from idle activities, but we walked right past the cafe. Don't you feel like going there today? I did consider it, but we've been to the cafe a few times already. I don't want it to get boring. Not when there's so many other things we could be doing. There's no shortage of places to go around here. And you said that you've lived a pretty sheltered life, didn't you? That is certainly true. I spent such a long time sleeping in Rilje. I know very little about the world you humans inhabit. I thought that was the case. So I decided to take us on the jaunt instead. I thought we could treat it like a date. Um, not that I was supposed to go on dates. Maybe it's more like a field trip or a fun day out. Uh, I'm getting myself all tied up in knots here. I need to try and stay cool. I guess I just wanted to change the pace. It should be a good way to help you relax if nothing else. And maybe if I play my cards right, it'll help improve Cuckoo's affection for me too. Not that I want to steal her heart or anything. The heart of an idol is a pure, precious thing. It belongs to everybody. Heh, well, that 
that doesn't sound too bad. I was thinking that I would like to explore the city a bit more, and I might even like to explore what lies beyond it. I'm not opposed to this idea. Though, I might feel differently if you do something to annoy me, producer. So I can't let your affection drop too low? Exactly. No girl wants to go out with a person they don't like, even if that person is you. Don't let me get too stressed either, otherwise I'll be too uneasy to enjoy spending any time with you. After that, I'll keep a close eye on your stats, whatever they are. See to it that you do. As my producer, that is your job. Now, where did you want to take me on our very first date? So, she's alright with calling it a date, huh? I was a little worried, but I guess it's fine. I thought we could do a bit of shopping. Alright, you're the boss. You know your way around here better than I do, so please, take me somewhere fun. I'm trusting you, producer. So, there's no pressure, huh? Fine, I'll try not to get too anxious. Now, where would Cuckoo like to go? Go to a clothes store, go to a toy store, go to an antique store. Antiques, why the heck not? Find some cursed SCPs there. Find some cursed artifacts there. Going to that shop was a lot of fun. They sold any number of intriguing arcane items. Did you not find it fascinating? I, uh, I guess. It was a pretty interesting store, but the proprietress didn't seem to like me very much. She kept glaring at me. She's like, why did you bring an eldritch abomination into my store? Oh, never mind. She did take a liking to Cuckoo, though. She offered her a lot of discounts. Maybe that shopkeeper is just weak to pretty girls. If that's the case, I understand. Cuckoo is adorable. I'm pretty weak against her myself. I don't know if I really understand her taste, though. I thought that store was creepy. You don't understand. There are so many spooky porcelain dolls, it feels like they're staring into my soul. And what was with all that occultic stuff? I know Cuckoo's into that kind of thing, but... Ritual knives and human skulls are kind of extreme. I hope they weren't real skulls. Um, did you like that book you bought then? I'm not sure yet. I need to have a chance to read through it properly. Still, the book is called the Necronomicon. Doesn't that sound delightfully ominous? It sounds like trouble for me. <laughs> Maybe it'll teach me how to summon a demon. I've always wanted to try that. Or you could just summon yourself. Oh, um... Life, your best life, I, I guess. That, that's very girl boss of you. Is that the sort of thing you should say to somebody who wants to summon a demon? Yes. What heck not? What's the worst that can happen? No. Hot demon boys. They're hot. I have no idea. I've never met anybody who wanted to summon the demon before. All of teenage girls are the hot demon boys, okay? But I never really was. And then I got into hot demon voice afterwards. Cuckoo might be cute, but her tastes sure are wild. Taking her to that store wasn't a mistake, was it? Producer! Producer! What in the world is that? That? Oh. We've only been at the zoo for about half an hour, but Cuckoo's asked me that about a dozen times already. I can understand not knowing what llamas are, but giraffes, zebras, lions? I thought that was common knowledge, not under the sea. She's even more sheltered than I thought. But that's fine, that's where I come in. I've only been to the zoo once before on a class field trip, but I've seen enough nature documentaries in my time that I can give Cuckoo a guided tour. That's an alpaca. They're fluffy creatures that are related to llamas. They come from... Somewhere. South America, I think, and their wool can be used to make scarves or gloves. They're pretty cute, don't you think? My perception of cuteness might be different from the average humans. But they are rather charming, yes. It's difficult to believe that these creatures are related to those awful spitting llamas. I can't say that I liked them very much. They kept on bleating and they stank. Alpacas are a lot more popular than llamas, yes? It's pretty crowded around the enclosure, isn't it? 
It is rather crowded in general. I worry we might get split up. That's a fair concern. Hmm. So just take your hot hand? That's rude. I suppose we could do that. But I thought that was something only couples did? Hold on, she's more astute than I thought. I guess I've not been giving her enough credit. Yeah, it's a thing that couples tend to do, yeah. But I don't have any ulterior motives, I swear. Even my palms are starting to sweat. I just want to keep you safe, that's all there is to it. It sounds a little suspicious when you insist like that. Crap, did I just out myself? I'm about as smooth as chunky peanut butter. But that's alright. It's laughable, of course, for you to assume that I would ever need your protection. But if you are willing to offer it, then who am I to refuse? I do not dislike the attention. <laughs> ah, she's so cute when she laughs. She's simply too precious for words. Uh, 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 all right then, um, uh, do, do you mind if we hold hands? Of course not. I think I would like that, in fact. I have no particular attachment to most humans, but when it comes to you, I suppose you're special. Lude! Hey, producer, I just had an idea. What is it? I was just thinking. As fulfilling as being a Nardo husband, I think I've had more fun playing with Nardo Hotep, even more lately. His presence is most diverting. Yeah. And I love running my fingers through his fur. He's so soft and furry, and his meows are simply adorable. Yeah. I was rushing him earlier, and it made me think. If Nala Hotep has been able to ensnare even my heart, he must be doubly adorable to humans. As a great old one, I shouldn't be so susceptible to small, cute, helpless creatures. Yeah. But I really do love Narla Hotep. I love everything about him, and I think other people would love him too if they had the chance to meet him. You're, you're probably right there. Pa cats are very popular. But where are you going with this? Well, I was just getting to that. I thought about the cafe that we frequent, and an idea occurred to me. What if we open the cafe of our own? Instead of populating it solely with maids in frilly dresses, however, we could also fill it with cats like Narla Hotep. I think this idea has the potential to become incredibly popular. People will come from all across the land to look at their cute kitties, and that will make people grovel at Nara Hotep's paws. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? I'd rather see people groveling at your feet, or I... well, I do like cats. Um... Me too! I knew there was a reason why I was so strongly drawn to you, producer. Beyond wanting a convenient person to aid me in my career, of course. You have an excellent taste, so that should go without saying. You did, after all, agree to work with me. I've had a fun, fulfilling time working with you as an idol. But I am several centuries too old to be acting like a high school girl. It's past time I acted my age. If Haster knew I'd been wearing a sailor uniform, he'd almost definitely tease me. But he can't tease me about opening a cat cafe. Everybody loves cats. Now, let's get to work. My brand new dream begins here. Sometime later. Wow. Hello, masters and mistresses, and welcome to Cuckoo's Cozy Cat Cafe. I'm Cuckoo, and I'll be your head maid today. Opening a cafe like this has been a long-standing dream of mine for all of three months, maybe. And after a lot of hard work, I was finally able to make my dream come true. I think that this place looks positively darling. Though I was only able to open this inn thanks to the help of my wonderful produ- Um... I suppose I can't call you producer anymore. Not when I'll be working at the cat cafe from now on. I guess I'll have to start calling you Anya again. That feels rather nostalgic, but no matter. Anya helped me raise the funds to open this cafe, and I couldn't be more grateful. 
He say help, but I didn't really have a choice. And some of your methods were aboard and a little underhanded. It was impossible to raise enough money to buy a place like this in such a short time frame, of course, so I had to sell a couple of bits and pieces to the Yakuza. My collection of rare idol goods went first, and my kidney followed not soon after. I'm never going to get that back. I'm very honored to have been trusted so much, and I'm glad I was given the chance to make this happen. Thank you very much, Anya, for believing in me. I didn't have a choice. I would have died otherwise. And thank you, everybody, for coming here on our grand opening day. I hope you have fun. Enjoy the food, play with the cats. Most of all, try to relax. Cats might have nine lives, but humans don't. You have pathetically short lifespans, so you might as well enjoy your limited years while you can. Yeah. Exactly. I couldn't have put it any better myself. Ending 19. Cuckoo's Cozy Cat Cafe at the cost of our kidneys. And also our idol goods. I'd rather see people groveling at your feet, even though that's really concerning. Hmm, I see. I suppose your outlook makes sense, given you have been acting as my producer. I understand that you might want to pivot your career so suddenly. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, Cuckoo, but at the end of the day, I still adore idols. I love them too much to simply give up on them. I hope you're not too disappointed. Oh, no, it is alright. I'm a benevolent old one, contrary to what some people might say, and they know how much you care for me. It is appreciated. So I will continue to work hard in turn. Besides, the more money I make from being an idol, the easier it will become to open the cat cafe of my dreams. Don't you fret, Narlhotep. I'll get you the attention you deserve. I promise! Yeah. Afternoon. Ah, <sighs> it's so nice out here. It makes for such a nice change of pace. Living in the city is convenient, but it's good to get away from the hustle and bustle every once in a while. It's a shame the train journey takes such a long time. But maybe that makes it feel like more of an adventure. Heh. <laughs> what do you think, Cuckoo? What? Oh. Is Cuckoo alright? She looks distracted. She's been acting a little strange ever since we came out here. She was excited when I first asked if she wanted to go to the countryside, but she's been unusually quiet during our hike. I thought she was conserving her energy, but maybe I was mistaken. Is it just me, or does she look a little melancholy? I was just thinking about how strange this all is. Strange? Yes, I spent a very long time at the bottom of the ocean, cut off from the rest of the world. I told myself that humanity had a little value, and the world in which you inhabit was hopelessly dull. But after spending some time here, I'm beginning to think that I was mistaken. There's a lot of fun things to do. And there's a lot of beautiful sights to see, just like this. When I glance out over these sprawling hills, it feels like my breath is being taken away. Is that odd? Cuckoo's looking unusually unsure of herself. I saw she came from the countryside since she knew so little about the city, but she seems even more out of her element here. It's almost as if the whole world is new to her. She can't really be from the bottom of the ocean, can she? Well, of course not. That's ridiculous. It doesn't matter where she comes from, though. No. I won't think any less of her. I don't think it's strange at all. That just means you're enjoying yourself. Or at least, I think it does. Hasn't this been a nice break? It is relaxing out here, yes. Good, and that means today was a success. <laughs> I was a little worried, actually, that you won't like it out here. Going hiking isn't a particularly popular activity for young girls. Though it could be worse, I could have invited you to go fishing with me. <laughs> Do you have much experience with fishing? A little. I went camping with my grandparents when I was younger, so I know a thing or two. I know how to roast sweet fish, I'm surprisingly good at pitching tents. And if any bears come and bother us, I can show them what for! Um, I beg your pardon? My right hook is enough to send any wild animal, no matter how rabid, running for cover! Don't do this in real life. 
I've taken on bears before and it's no big deal. You just have to show them who's boss. Goodness, and here I was, trying to have a serious moment. You constantly say things that bemuse me. But maybe the feeling's mutual? Probably. I don't understand half the stuff that comes out of your mouth, Cuckoo. But that's fine. Everybody always calls me a weirdo too, so I'm used to it. They would if you go around punching bears. And snakes. Snakes? Yeah. If video games have taught me anything, it's that punching a problem is the best way to solve them. Be a bear, snakes, bats, or your muddy grubbing landlord. It always works like a charm. No, it doesn't. I'll take your word for it. Uh -huh. Oh, was that your stomach, Cuckoo? No, of course not. It's just your imagination. I would never make such an uncouth. Uh... Well, we have been walking for quite a while and it is almost lunchtime. I may be a little bit peckish. Same here. All of that exercise really took it out of me. <laughs> I doubt there'd be any restaurants or convenience stores around here. So I decided to make lunch for us. What do you think? Oh my, this is unexpectedly competent coming from you, producer. I know, right? I think I've gotten pretty good at cooking recently, and it's all thanks to you. Me? Yeah, if you'd not push me, I would never have bothered learning. I was fine living off cup noodles and prepackaged rice balls. But I figured that's no way to treat a budding idol like you. I deserve much, much better than that. My cooking skills still aren't the best, but I was able to whip up some rolled egg omelets, which are only a little burnt, and some wieners that are cut into cute little octopus shapes. I also cooked the rice and then prepared the salad. I didn't fry the chicken myself. I was afraid I'd get splashed with oil, but everything else should be good. What do you think? Well, now, let me see. I think I'll start with one of the wieners. Munch munch. Oh, her eyes are lining up. Does that mean she likes it? I must confess, my expectations were rather low. Which might explain how you were able to exceed them. This wiener is a little charred, but it really is tasty. Yay. Hello everybody! Thank you so much for coming to support little old me! I might be a great old one, but I'm still a teenage girl at heart. I've been working very hard during these last two weeks to debut as an idol. And my first concert has finally arrived! I would like to thank my producer for helping me to set everything up. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Now, it's time for me to perform my first and only original song, The Call of Kufalu. Please, feel free to join with me if you so desire. I want the beach to fill with cries of yeah, yeah, Kufalu, fritang. Of course, Cuckoo! Anything for you! I'll follow you until the ends of the earth. I'll follow you until our bones turn to dust. I'll follow you until we all go insane. I'll follow you right up until I get a girlfriend. Then I might have to do it. We're nothing compared to you! Ah, uh, yeah, Kufalu Futang! Yeah, yeah, Kufalu Futang! Ah, uh, yeah, Kufalu Futang! Alright, that's what I like to hear! Let's do this! Here I go! I guess that's a wrap. How do you think I did, producer? I think you did a great job, Cuckoo. The crowd wasn't as large as we would have liked, but I think everybody had a good time. They were all chanting your name, and they all looked enamored with you. <laughs> I suppose they did, didn't they? Things could have gone worse. Though, they could have gone a lot better. It is somewhat unfortunate that I wasn't able to become more well-known. But I suppose life does not work out the way we want, not even for great old ones such as myself. It is disappointing, but I suppose I can chalk this up to a learning experience. It was not a complete failure, at least. And I feel very fortunate that, through sick and sin, you have remained by my side. 
Kuku? She's getting kind of close. I can see the light from the setting sun playing across her hair. Her eyelashes are so long and pretty. How she looks adorable in that outfit. Could I have triggered a confession scene? I appreciate a good deal, producer. In the beginning, I feared that you would drag me down, being nothing more than a weak, spineless human. But you have proven yourself to be more useful than I could have ever imagined. None of this would have been possible, were it not for you. Well, she's reaching out to me. And now she's holding my hand. Lude! I would have fallen short of my goal, but I think I found something even more precious along the way. I found you. Is this it? Is she gonna kiss me? And you're the best friend an old one could have. Yes, Sid, she, she, she had- Wait, wait, what? I just got friends soon. You, you, you want to think of me as a friend? Indeed. What else would I think of you as? You have become surprisingly dear to me. So, though I could not debut as an idol in an official capacity, I will not hold it against you. I will spare your feeble life, and I promise I won't drown you. As my friend, that is the least I can do for you. Oh, um, thank, thanks, I guess. As far as rewards go, not being killed should be a bare minimum. But maybe I'm being too greedy. Oh well, at least I get to enjoy the sunset with Cuckoo. Now that I'm thinking about it, I guess I am pretty fortunate after all. Cuckoo's stint at being an idol didn't quite work out how any of us wanted, but I don't think we lost anything. I couldn't reinvigorate my career, but I did manage to gain a friend. And I think that's a very special thing indeed. Ending 23. Mada mada dane.